Hey guys, Backyard Scientist here. Last week when I made the lava volcano in my garage, I had molten aluminum spill onto the concrete floor. And that could be very dangerous because I've always heard that when concrete gets really hot, it can explode from the heat. And that would be bad because aluminum could get flung everywhere inside the garage. This is a phenomenon known as spalling. More on that later, but it can also happen to rocks around a campfire. They can get so hot from the fire, they can just explode, or at least that's what I've heard. So today, we're going to be testing how dangerous are rocks exploding in a campfire, and is molten aluminum enough to make concrete explode and fling molten aluminum everywhere? So first, let's get started mixing up some concrete. All right, so we've been working on making our own concrete mixes to see if they explode or what. So the first one we did was filled with Orbeez. We shredded up a bunch of Orbeez like this and mixed them into the concrete, and that didn't end up working too well. Well, I mean, it worked, but it split the concrete, I guess, because the Orbeez started expanding and broke apart the concrete. But they are in there, and we uh, fixed it up a little bit, so hopefully we can still try this one. We also made two more special mixes of concrete. One filled with rebar, which was really just chopped up wire, and another one filled with a ton of tiny little stainless steel BBs used for sandblasting. So the theory here is that steel expands when it gets heated. So the steel will expand inside of the concrete when it gets hot, putting a lot of stress on the inside of the concrete, causing it to explode. So while these are drying, let's test out rocks in a campfire. I heard that they can explode like a grenade, but is that really the case? Let's put it to the test. I learned in Boy Scouts, don't make campfire rings out of the wrong type of rocks because you can just be sitting there enjoying a fire and then all of a sudden it sounds like freaking Vietnam going off with the book. Okay, it's not that dramatic, but sometimes the rocks do crack and explode. So we got a bunch of different kinds of rocks here that we're gonna try out. We've got like granite, jade, some slates. We have two different types of river rocks. This thing, this, this is some little cement brick wall I made. And we're just gonna light it on fire and see which kind of rocks explode the best. After about eight minutes of the rocks cooking in the fire, we got our first crack rock. I mean, rock, rock crack. But that was only one rock and there's still a lot of rocks on that fire. So we kept that fire going for 15 more minutes because let me tell you, there's nothing like sitting around a hot, smoky campfire in the middle of the day in Florida. Well, we had a couple big pops with the dry rocks, but nothing that I would be too worried about. Next, we're gonna be trying the same rocks, but this time I've been soaking them in water. So here's my theory. When water heats up, it creates steam, which will put a lot of pressure on the inside of the rock, possibly causing the rock to explode. So are wet rocks more dangerous than dry rocks? Let's find out. So now I'm curious if any of you guys have ever experienced any exploding rocks in a campfire. If you or your friend ever had any rocks explode in a campfire, put the story down below in the comments. You know, was it loud? Did it scare you? Did it fling off and hit you in the face? We'd like to know, put it down below. Anyway, after only a couple minutes, the wet rocks really started popping off. Oh my God. I'd say that the wet rocks were way more active than the dry rocks. There was little explosions one after another, throwing little bits of rock up to 20 feet away. All in all though, I'd still say that you're safe around your local campfire because we tried all different kinds of rocks, wet and dry, and we could still never get a big explosion. I mean, theoretically, I'm sure it can happen, but I think the real danger is from little bits of embers being kicked out by the explosions and starting another fire somewhere else. So now that that's settled, let's move on to the concrete and see what happens there. Well, first up is the concrete filled with all the steel BBs. Let's see how it performs. Well, it looked like nothing was happening, so we waited two minutes till it looked like the aluminum was cooled, and then we went over to check it out. Especially because it's well solidified now, so... Oh! 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 So, oh! 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 <laughs> oh my gosh, right when I said that, right when I said that, it happened. Next up is the rebar cement, and this stuff was super active. After about 40 seconds, it really started popping off. Oh, we got one. Wow, look at it go. Oh, it's, it's going again. Oh, that's cute. Bunch of little ones. Well, once the aluminum cooled, I thought nothing else was gonna happen, so I turned off the camera, and then this happens, of course, as soon as I turn off the main camera. But hey, we still got it in high speed, so that's pretty cool. Dang, look at all the bumps and- Bubbles. Like, yeah. Yeah. And so look at that. The whole top part just popped right off, and I wonder if it was because the little bits of rebar in the concrete, this whole thing just went pew, right up into the air, and it's still hot. 
So why does concrete explode? And I was wrong, it's not because of the rebar. One reason that concrete can explode in a fire is because of the heat of the fire turns the water inside of the concrete into steam, putting a bunch of pressure on the inside of it and blowing it apart. This is the same reason why some rocks explode in a campfire. Porous rocks such as sandstone can hold and trap water and this would make them explode in a fire. Granite, on the other hand, is impermeable to water so there's really no risk of it exploding. Thermal stress is another reason the concrete explodes in fire. The heat causes the outer layers to expand, placing a bunch of stress on the concrete, causing it to explode. And it turns out that concrete and rebar have about the same expansion ratio from the heat, and the rebar actually ends up protecting the fire by carrying the heat away and evenly distributing it. So it seems like if we want to make our own exploding concrete, we're going to need a lot of water and low permeability, and I think I've perfected the mixture just right. Wow. So now that we've learned why concrete spalls and what circumstances and materials cause it to spall, I've went ahead and reverse engineered that list into this. This is my own DIY super spalling concrete mix. Number one, it's a very strong high performance cement. Number two, I've added diatomaceous earth into it to really clog up the pores and really build up the pressure on the inside of the concrete. And number three, I've been soaking it in water to really increase the moisture content of this. So what this is, it's a block of concrete with a void in the center. It's basically I used one of these little one quart buckets on the inside of it like that. So we're gonna pour molten aluminum inside of it this time instead of just on top of it. So it'll be in contact with the molten aluminum a lot longer and hopefully it'll heat it up enough that the whole thing will break apart. Hmm, well, it doesn't look like things are off to the best start. I spilled half the aluminum at first, and then all the smoke is from the bucket that's on the inside. I thought it would catch on fire, but it ended up just ex obscuring the view of everything. Still, I don't think all hope is lost just yet. <laughs> yeah, you can tell that I'm a little bit excited about how well this worked. I didn't have high hopes for it. And ironically, this was way better of a volcano than I made in last week's video, and it was totally an accident. Well, that works pretty well. You can see the aluminum all over the grass here. It probably shot up about 15, 20 feet straight up in the air. And also, you can see that I spilled almost all of the aluminum, barely even any got in there. So we're going to try this again, and I'm not going to spill the aluminum this time. Notice how I prepare for this by taking the propane tank away, but I'm still a little bit unsure how well this will work because the hole is still a little bit plugged up with molten aluminum and there's still a bunch of molten plastic in there that needs to be burned away. Nevertheless, I'm always an optimist, so let's see if this works out. Yes, that is exactly what I was hoping for the first time. You can see that the entire block split in half and the molten aluminum shot straight up like some kind of shaped charge. Wow, now that was more like it. That thing, look, come over here and see this. It totally cracked the concrete in half right here. Boom, it, it, con it cracked that in half, spilled out the side here, still super hot. Over there too, look at the crack over here. Yeah. So that thing exploded, and there's stuff all in the grass over here. Check this out. Little bits in the grass like that. And it went far too. Let me show you how far it went. Well, number one, my poor orchids. It landed on the roots of the orchid over here. Oh man, poor thing. But it went all the way, look at this, in the leaves. It's like sprinkles. <laughs> it's sprinkles, but still that's 25 feet away. So yeah. And it's still hot. <laughs> It's hot sprinkles. still hot. Luckily it rained because nothing's on fire right now. Otherwise everything would be on fire right now because it really scattered the aluminum, you know, 20 feet in all direction. And this is the perfect reason why you don't pour aluminum in a wet mold because it will crack and explode and sputter all over the place just like that. I want to do an autopsy on this and see what's on the inside. Whoa. That I don't like. I feel like you're making it mad. Oh, there you go. Oh, you got, got it. it. Wow, that is like the perfect, it looks exactly like the crucible. Well, I think that settles that. Uh, definitely pouring molten aluminum into something that has water in it will cause an explosion, especially with our super spalling cement. Anyway, we have one more test and that's to pour molten aluminum on the driveway to see what would happen because that's what would actually happen in real life if I spilled it. We just need a good control in this experiment. So let's try this. 
So this is what would actually happen if I spilled molten aluminum on my driveway while I was working on something. And to cover all my bases, I made sure some of the cement was wet and some of it was dry. But nothing really happened, and I think that's because the aluminum really spreads out and cools quickly. Totally solidified. So there we go. One giant piece of aluminum that I spilled on my driveway and no explosions. Well, we tried everything we could do to try to get the concrete to explode. We filled this up with a bunch of aluminum, heated it up, poured it on the driveway, and there was no explosion. But either way, I hope you guys learned something about rocks and concrete heat spalling, and you know, until next time, see you later. Also, a special thank you to my brother Riley and my girlfriend Sandra for helping me film and make these videos. I, they help me all the time, and I really don't thank them enough, so thank you. You guys can help me too, just by liking the video, commenting on the video, sharing it with your friends, anything helps. And thank you guys, you're the best. See you next time.